parents of Savannah know, a healthy and very active ninth grader at Scott County High School. Uh, she was a eighth grade basketball player. She dove on the high school dive team and she was on the swim team for Georgetown. Uh, July the 29th was a normal Sunday evening. Everybody was watching the Olympics, hanging out. Uh, we decided, me and Savannah decided to get in the pool. I was going to clean. She was going to swim and practice for swim meets. Uh, in the process of doing so, she got to swimming uh, underwater, holding her breath. Uh, she came up. Her face was extremely red. Uh, she was patting her chest. I thought when I first saw her at that very moment, I thought she had inhaled water and she couldn't breathe. Uh, as I started toward her, she collapsed into the pool. Uh, that's when I grabbed her and I started drag trying to drag her out of the pool and that's when I started screaming for my wife to come help me get her out of the pool. When I heard my husband screaming, I come running out of the house and immediately yelled for our daughter to call 911. And all I could see was Savannah's head over and she wasn't uh, wasn't awake and he was trying to push her out of the pool and I started helping him pull her out of the pool and we laid her on the deck. Our oldest daughter was calling 911 and talking to the operator at the time and we both began trying to uh, do what they were saying and I immediately tried to unlock her teeth they were clenched tight and she let out a, a moan or a groan and I I thought she was having a seizure and I, the operator was talking to us and uh, before we knew it that's when Paul showed up uh, and he he was assessing her and had I helped him hold the bag on her mouth why, and why he began compressions and then Brad Polly arrived and he, him and Paul took over. I, I stepped out of the way and that's when uh, my panic and fear set in uh, as I stood back and watched. The ambulance shortly arrived with the crew. Um, they put the AED on her chest and began to shock her. And of course, I was in a state of panic at the time then, but um, I watched them. Uh, Savannah had turned uh, blue, uh, purple, looking cold. And um, they shocked her several times there on the pool deck. They loaded her in, as they loaded her in the ambulance, um, we followed them to to Georgetown Community Hospital. Um, when they took Savannah out of the ambulance, she was, um, they, they had gotten her heartbeat back. When we went into Georgetown, they uh, were assessing her and told us that they would called U University of Kentucky. The ambulance shortly arrived and they took her to uh, the University of Kentucky Children's Hospital. Um, that night we were told that um, she would be evaluated and seen how her body would react to the amount of time that her heart was stopped and she would be kept under a body temperature, lower body temperature. Basically she was going to be in an induced coma and they had to bring her body temperature down with ice packs and then they put her in what they call a, a chill suit and it brings her body temperature down low enough to keep any possible swelling because the amount of time she was without oxygen as far as not breathing they didn't know if there was going to be any trauma to the organs or to the brain or to the body so that was their concern. So for three days she was in an ice pack with her body temperature lowered to help keep the swelling down and then as the third day came around they started to uh, raise her temperature. When, when Savannah started to wake up, um, 
she was in a panic state because there was a ventilator inserted in her, into her mouth and of course she didn't know where she was or anything but and all I could see was the fear in her eyes because she didn't understand what was going on and they uh, would sedate her and, 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 do, and slowly bring her out and when she started to wake up and they did take the ventilator out Savannah was alert, aware, wanting to know what was going on. We absolutely had no um, problems with her, with her mind, her memory. You know, of course she didn't remember and she didn't understand why she was there. But Savannah was um, very feisty and <laughs> very alert. And... Um, they took everything off of her. All the uh, her, all the breathing equipment, all the monitors. So uh, they were just assessing her to make sure that her motor skills was working. That uh, they had uh, neurologists come in and check her. They had psychologists come in and confirm her that you know her mind was good, but uh, she was doing exceptionally well. Uh, what our we didn't know at the time that we were at the pool that uh, we thought she had inhaled water and was drowning, that she had went into sudden cardiac arrest. So that was a, that was a major issue for us because, you know, here we went from thinking drowning to uh, cardiac arrest. So that was a, pretty much changed our game for us pretty quick. But uh, Dr. Camp advised us about having the ICD installed into her chest and explained everything to us about um, what would happen. We were in ICU for probably 10 days. Um, the last uh, day or two before we left, they installed the ICD. And um, she will be having, will have that for the rest of her life. But... It's a... It's a foolproof method. I mean, I, we think uh, that it's there. Uh, if it is for some instance, it ever happens again, which they say it may never, ever happen again. But if for some great reason or unknown reason it did happen or was to happen, uh, her heart would not stop. It would, the ICD would continually keep it beating. We um, would like to thank everyone at um, UK Hospital and Dr. Camp and Dr. Schneider, uh, the cardiology team there. Uh, of course, we want to thank uh, the Georgetown Scott County EMS and Fire Department and Paul and Brad. Uh, thank you very much. If anything you get out of this video, uh, like I said, we both panicked uh, and CPR was compression and CPR was what why is she here today that's you know our neighbor Pa was a minute or oh, a minute and a half away and that made the difference she's alive today because CPR was performed in the first minute and a half so if you don't know CPR and you have children or if you know if you know anybody please learn CPR because it is a lifesaver